Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever it is when you watch this video. Welcome back to Rob Sandstrom Designs. In this series of videos, I want to show how I design, carve, pour, and finish an epoxy flag to celebrate Memorial Day. I'll go through each of the steps like I have in other videos, and I'll put a playlist together for this. The first video I'm going to focus on is the designing of the flag in VCarve Pro and sharing with you how I went about doing that and setting up the tool pass. The next video I will go through will be the carving and pouring of the various epoxy colors. The third video will be the uh, surfacing and finishing of the flag. And then soon after that, I'll go through an updated video on calculating epoxy volumes things that I've picked up over the last year or so of doing these videos. I hope you enjoy this video. With that, let's get started. In this video, I'm going to go quickly through the design of a Memorial Day flag and how I set it up for epoxy, and then move on to doing uh, the carving and pouring of the epoxy. I'm gonna try to not spend as much detail into the design uh, if that's uh, requested, I can always do that at a later time, but I'm going to show you the steps I went through. You can see I've already established the tool pass over here on the right side, and so I'm just going to go through how I went about designing this flag. So I started out with an American flag that's to regulatory size. So I first designed the flag so that it met the uh, American flag calculator. I'll put a link in the uh, description of this of where that calculator is so I made sure the stripes and stars and everything fit uh, the way they were supposed to I had a poplar board that I glued up that was 21 inches by 14.25 inches and uh, so I fit the flag by sizing it directly down onto that board so the regulatory sizes uh, remained the same it was just scaled so I first built that flag and I have those vectors and if we come up here to the layers you can see I've got the following vectors associated with that flag. I've got the starfield border which is this blue part here. The starfield pocket, these are the stars, things that I would normally carve in in a pocket. I've got the red stripes and I've got the white stripes and as you see if I click those off the design goes away. So that is the design of the flag. What I wanted to do was bring in another um, design that I did last year for the um, Memorial Day and that was a plaque you may recall. I did a series of videos on that. I'll put a link to that in this video in which I had a kneeling soldier and so let's go through what that looked like. I brought that from the previous plaque and let me turn on the various layers for that. Okay, so those are the layers and if I turn off the flag, not the soldier, you may recognize this from my plaque last year. Uh, and I'll, I'll put a picture somewhere in this uh, screen of what that plaque was as a reminder. Again, I did a video series on that, on how to build that plaque and I gave away a plaque to somebody that was following at the time. It was a giveaway. So now what I did was I took the stars and stripes from the flag and I put this and I overlaid that on the stars and stripes. So the goal when I was arranging this was to set it up such that these stripes of course weren't going through the pour and to be able to pour the colors in succession. And I have three different pours that I needed to arrange. The first one is the clear pours that we normally do to prevent bleed into the poplar. The second one I decided would be my black pour, which was my biggest pour, and I was going to make the stripes black, poplar, black, poplar, black, poplar, and so on for So the red stripes were going to be black and the white stripes were going to be the poplar color, and that's the plan right now. If for some reason I don't like the way that looks, then I can always come in and make the part that's poplar turn that into white stripes and it can actually be all epoxy, but I do like to keep the wood. So I'm going to go ahead and that's the design. So the next thing I needed to do then was to go through the process of cutting all of these things out. And instead of taking a long time and doing that in this video, 
I didn't I didn't want to take all the time that I will get into the pour part of it so I can show you that. Let me go through what it looks like now before I start to pour it. So the first thing I did was I had to set it up so that my red stripes would actually incorporate the edge of this circle or actually my black stripes and flow into it. So let me show you what that looks like when I take off the white stripes and the red stripes and then I take off the border here, Starfield border, and go through what I, how I set it up. The first thing I did was to go ahead and set it up so that I took the red stripes and through cutting and tweaking, and you can see how, hopefully you can see how I cut those around. I pulled the red stripes into the black circle. Remember, this is going to be black. So now each of the black stripes are pulled into the circle. Then later, what I do is I cut each of these so that they flow into the circle. And let me show you what that looks like. When I get done, I'm going to take out the soldiers because that would be part of a white pour. And so I've taken that out. I'm going in here and I'm shifting to what I call a black pour. Now these stars will be out of the black pour. And so I will go ahead and show you taking those stars out. So when I pour this flag, I'm going to pour all of that black. And when I get done pouring that black, then I can come in and pour the white. As we discussed in uh, previous videos, I would normally pour a clear coat of epoxy just uh, outside this black area to prevent bleeding into the poplar. Lots of people have asked me in the past, is there some way where I wouldn't have to use as much epoxy? So I thought I would experiment with that this time. And so instead of actually pouring a full clear coat in all of these areas, including this large pocket here and this large pocket here, what I did was I set up a clearance path. And let's see if you can see this. So you can see this clearance path is everything inside of this little over a quarter inch channel in between these two areas right here. So in there is black. Right here to here is clear. And you'll see that when I carve it. So I, what I've done is I've surrounded all of the black border with clear so that when I carve the black, there will still be a small border of clear to prevent the black from bleeding into the poplar. I hope that's clear. What won't happen is I'm not going to fill this big pocket with clear. I'm not going to fill this big pocket with clear. And everywhere you see in the stripes between will not be filled with clear. So it will save me, oh, probably about 10 ounces or so of epoxy. And so that was the goal of trying this new technique to see how it worked. And uh, if it works, I may try it in other projects, just trying a new technique. So once I have the clear, let me turn off the clear now. I had to set up for the white soldier and the rest of the car. So what I did was I set up the white part of the carve. Now the only part that's going to be carved white, recall, is the soldier and the text and these rings that are around the soldier and the stars. Recall that I was going to leave the poplar as the white stars, so that's still the plan. So right now, the way this is set up is there'll be three pours. The first one is a clear pour, the second one will be the black pour, and the third one will be the white pour. There may be other pours if I have to touch things up, but that is the current plan. So I have all of the Clear, I have the clear, the black pour, and the white pour set up. So what I'm going to do is show you how I did the actual tool pass. It looks kind of messy here, but you'll see in a second. So the first thing I did was I wanted a preview to make sure it would work. So I'm going to go to tool pass, open that up. And the first thing I did was a clear pass. So let me mark this as CL for clear. And so you can see it. I'm just going to make this 05 depth for right now. And I'm going to hit calculate. And let me show you what that looks like. Preview visible. So that's going to be where I pour clear epoxy. You'll see that when I actually do the pour. 
Then I want to do the black epoxy. And the black epoxy, I started that at an 05, so I'm going to go down here to say another 0.05. We'll see how well that works. I'm using a V bit, 30 degree V bit, and a quarter inch end mill to do the hogging because the black is going to pull all of this area, all of this area in between here. Just doing this for the preview. I'm just setting this up for the preview. I also added a 1 8 inch end mill and that was to help get in the corners and not put all the work on the V bit. In the end I really didn't need that but I did add it so I'm going to keep it there. And this is black so I'm going to hit calculate and you can see this is where the black is going to go. And let's hit preview. Let's make that tool color black so we're looking all together. Hit preview and we'll see how that looks. So that's what the black pour is going to look like. Okay, now that we've got the uh, the actual black toolpath set up, I'm going to work on the white. You will see that I've got the start depth at 0.1, flat depth 0.05 again. Those aren't the final depths. The final depths will be zero for the start depth and 0.125 for this depth. This is just for the preview. I want to point out that I'm using a different bit than I normally use in previous projects. Normally I would use a 15 degree V bit, especially for the detail in the soldier trigger and for the nice sharp points. And I switched to a bit that's not quite as fragile. I'm trying some new stuff. And so now I've got an, a, a, a mana ball nose bit. It's a tapered ball nose bit. It's a mana 46473. And it's a 12.4 degree versus 15 degree tip. It's a 6 millimeter shank, so I need to buy a 6 millimeter collet. And uh, I'm trying that for the first time uh, with the epoxy inlays. I did uh, use it with some wood inlays on a wooden flag I did in the last week or two, and it worked quite well. I'm taking a course on how to improve my wood inlay skills. And this is what was recommended, so I switched. And uh, in the end, uh, I think I'll be quite happy with the uh, results. And anyway, I just wanted to point that out. I'm using a MANA 46473 versus my normal V bit. I've got a 1 8 inch clearance bit. And now we'll go ahead and calculate. I've uh, selected all of the vectors. We'll go ahead and calculate it. And then we'll preview it. And there you have it. We're all set up. Well, folks, at this point in the process, we have fully designed the flag. The design of the flag came from a couple different files that I had in the past. One was a Memorial Day plaque that I had did a YouTube video on last year, and I gave away that plaque to a, to a follower. And I also gave away the file for that plaque so that others could make it if they wanted to. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link in the description. I'll also put a link card in this video up at the, uh, I think it's this corner, but it's the top corner of the video so that you can see that plaque and that design and get that file if you want. The other one was I used a standard uh, US American flag that I had created using uh, a calculator to make sure that all of the sizes of the stars and locations and the stripes all fit the regulatory sizes. I built a master and then I just sized that master up or down depending on what my project is so that I keep the regulatory aspect ratios the same. So I put those two, flat, those two designs together. I did modify that Memorial Day plaque kneeling soldier from what I did last year, and you'll notice the words are slightly different. Instead of, uh, shall we never forget, what I put this time was, all gave some, some gave all. Now that we have the design of the flag built, we have the following steps left. One is we have to calculate the amount of epoxy that's going to go into each pour. Number two is we have to carve the board for each color of epoxy. The first one being the clear, the second one being the black, and the third one being white. Once we've got everything carved, 
We then need to go ahead and make the pores for each color, wait for them to harden, and then after each color hardens, go ahead and make the next pour, etc., etc. Once we have all the uh, pores done, then we need to do the final step, which is surfacing and finishing that board. Instead of making this video so long that you have to sit through all of that in one setting, I'm going to go ahead and release this video with the design. And then I'm going to add more videos in this playlist, and I'm going to try to produce those all in the next few days. I have the videos, so you're not going to have to wait weeks. And the next videos will focus on the following things. Carving for each color, and then the pouring for that color and then the surfacing and finishing. And I'll try to keep the um, carving and pouring all in one video so you get to see all the colors carved and poured. Uh, I think that can be nice and condensed. You don't wanna actually watch the full amount of time for each card. So in summary, here's where we're going. We've got the design done. We're going to show how to calculate the amount of epoxy. Then we're going to carve and pour each color and then finally, we're going to surface and finish the epoxy and do a summarization. If you want to be aware when those videos are ready and come out, you may want to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and hit that little bell that tells you when these videos come out. I appreciate uh, your patronage. I appreciate you watching and commenting. And if you have any questions on this uh, information, let me know. If you want more details on how I did the cutting and trimming of the design, Put something in the comment and I can go through the details of how I did that, but that would have taken quite a lot of time in this video and I decided that uh, it might not be that valuable for everybody else. If you like what you're seeing, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate you visiting the channel and until we meet in this medium again, have a great day.